Hi, YouTubers and wet shavers everywhere. It's MargaretGeorgeTune.com. I'm back with another Monday morning mailbag. Get yourself a cup of coffee, kick back, relax. Let's talk a little wet shaving and a few other things. What do you got this morning? I got an old standby. Oh, I love this coffee. Yeah, that is just absolutely a wonderful cup of coffee. Dunkin' Donuts. The original blend, medium roast. Just a great cup of coffee. Now, I buy these bags at Sam's Club. They last, they last me forever. I think it comes now in a, um, a different container, maybe a plastic kind of container. Uh, but I haven't, had to, <laughs> I haven't had to buy one yet because this lasts me a long time. And it stays fresh. And it's a great cup of coffee. And uh, I really like the Dunkin' Donuts brand coffee. And uh, the mug, uh, 1460, here, right here, W... BNS, the voice of the Buckeyes, the uh, radio broadcast arm of the Ohio State Buckeyes. Listen to all those football games when I was down there at Ohio State. If I was in a car, of course, we saw them on television. Of course, you go to the stadium. You, you buy tickets and you go to all the home games. That was great. And uh, national championship game tonight. The Ohio State Buckeyes are in it. They're playing the Alabama Crimson Tide. Uh, let's hope for a really, really good game. And uh, good luck to my Buckeyes. Go Buckeyes. But uh, yeah, this mug brings back a lot of memories. I've had this forever. And I found it, found it in the folks' home. And uh, it either I either brought it home from, uh, from school, from Ohio State, or a brother brought it home from Ohio State. But anyhow, uh, yeah, brings back a lot of nice memories. I remember one of the radio reporters coming to the fraternity house before a big game, the morning of the big game, whatever it was, interviewing some of my fraternity brothers on the radio, which was really kind of neat back then. So, yeah, WBNS 1460. I think it's AM, FM now, 97.1 and 1460. So um, if anybody is in Columbus, uh, let me know, and uh, maybe you can verify that for me. So, yeah, just great coffee mug, brings back a lot of memories, and a great coffee. So there you go. All right. Well, before we get to some of these questions, let's go back for a refill. Okay. Also forgot to mention, I hope you're enjoying a cup of coffee with me this morning. Uh, so really fill it up, kick back. Let's talk a little about shaving. So uh, the refill topic this morning comes from Greg MD. And he emailed me and wrote, Mark, Avon Campaign 3 2021 catalog lists wild country aftershave splash and spray cologne. Just thought you might like to know. Really enjoyed today's video review on Shark Super Chrome Blades. Best wishes, Greg MD. Greg, I'm glad you enjoyed the review. Thank you very much. But more importantly, thank you for the tip on uh, Avon Wild Country Aftershave Splash and the uh, spray cologne. That's great because this was gone for a long time. People couldn't find it. And then Avon brought it back at the end of, I think, 2019 and at the end of 2020 for a limited time. And uh, great to know that it's up there right now in the year 2021 as part of their catalog, along with the spray cologne. So if you've been looking for either one of these or both, it's available now. I'll have a link below. Uh, the only thing I don't see up there is the aftershave balm. Now, I get mine on uh, Amazon.com, and if it's still available, I'll have a link to this one as well uh, on Amazon. So uh, this is also a very good product. So um, that's great to know. Thanks very much for letting us know, Greg MD. Really appreciate it. Okay, this next question comes from Tim Whitcup. And Tim writes, I pulled out my Americano razor and forgot how nice a shave it gives. So I have a question for your Monday morning mailbag if you chose to use it. Do you use razors that you bought from two, three, or more years ago? Do you have a rotation? Anyway, I think it would be interesting to hear what you say and probably for your many other viewers. Tim, thanks for the question. A very good question. And yes, I do use those razors that I bought uh, several years ago. Uh, and of course, I think everyone knows uh, what I'm going to say right, right, off, right off the bat. The one I always 
like to pull out is the Vikings Blade Chieftain. This was the razor that brought me back to the traditional wet shave. I like to pull this one out and use it as often as possible. I love the shave that it gives. As a matter of fact, uh, I used it the other day with a new shaving product that I'll be reviewing soon. Did a wonderful job, and I'll probably use it in the review uh, because it just does such a nice job. Love this. Love this razor. I bought it as an introduction to the traditional wet shave because um, it was twist to open. It had nice weight. The uh, razor head encloses the uh, end tabs of the razor blade. Uh, good knurling on the handle. Overall, great look. Great weight. Uh, just wonderful razor. And yes, I do I do bring that out every once in a while, and, and I do shave with it, as I do with uh, this one right here, uh, the Merker HD34C. This is another razor that uh, I revisit from time to time. I think I bought this shortly after the Chieftain or thereabouts. Terrific razor, nice mild shave, it's a two-piece razor. I like this one a lot. Um, another razor that uh, I recently used was the Ebony Handled from uh, Edwin Jagger. Uh, of course, I have a DE89L. So uh, I find myself using the Edwin Jagger razors um, from time to time. I pull them out. Now, as far as a rotation, I really don't have a rotation per se because of some of the new gear that comes into my, my shaving den that I review on this channel, which is really an enjoyable part of the channel. I absolutely love introducing new razors to, uh, to the viewers. That's, that's been great. But when I am not shooting video, I try to revisit some of these old razors, especially if I get a question regarding the performance of the razor. Someone will comment and say, hey, Mark, uh, the Mercur Futur, um, they'll have a question about it. So in, in, in order to answer the question, sometimes I'll say, you know what? I've got the razor. I'm going to use it tomorrow, and then I'll report back. And it's a great, it's, 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 it kind of reminds me, hey, you've got that razor, use it. And that's, that's wonderful. So yeah, I used this about a week and a half ago. Great, great shave. I think I did that maybe two weeks ago in answering someone's query about the, um, the razor itself. Um, here's a razor I used recently, and I think I used this on camera too, was the Doc Razor from Phoenix Shaving. I bought this maybe a year, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. Double open comb razor, uh, an homage to the Slock, the self-lubricating open comb razor. This gave a really, really wonderful, wonderful shave. Really, really enjoyed it. And because I used this razor, uh, coincidentally, Phoenix Shaving at that time launched the Ascension uh, twist adjustable razor. Uh, with a very, very similar razor head. And because I pulled this out of the drawer, I just happened to see the alert on this and thought, wow, I had such a great shave with this. This is probably going to give me a great shave too. And it did. So if you haven't seen the review on this, uh, really, this is a terrific, terrific razor. Um, and uh, the other razor, well, you know what? I wanted to say the other razor I was going to use, the razors that I have not used uh, are the following. Now, I have not used this one. This belonged to my late father, the, uh, his 1957 Gillette Super Speed. I haven't used this in a long time, and I don't know why. Um, I just haven't used it, but I have to use this razor again because it gives a wonderful, wonderful shape. Just haven't used it. And it's there. I see it uh, in my drawer. I know it's there, but I think I have, this, I have it tucked away, I guess, for safekeeping but I do need to pull this out and use it. Another razor that I have not used and probably won't use for quite some time is this one right here. I keep it in a, uh, this is actually a Simpson brush box that I hung on to. I have it wrapped up here like this. This is, I'll show you right here. This is uh, the Gillette old type razor that uh, I believe this belonged to my grandfather because I found it in my father's shaving gear. And since this dates back to about 1918, 1920, and my father was born in 1922, uh, it would make sense that if he had it in his shaving gear, it most likely belonged to his father. So, um, yeah, I don't shave with it. I think I've shaved with this twice. And I won't shave with it again because 
I'm afraid that uh, something might go wrong. Now, characteristically, if you come across these in antique stores, characteristically, you might find a fine crack or even a, a split in the handle. And that, just because of three-piece razor, it just came from repeated use of tightening it on the razor head over and over and over again, and it just eventually split this handle. This one does not have any hairline cracks, and I'm trying to avoid that, which is why I'm not using it. So I will just uh, very gently put this aside here and put, put it aside again and uh, <laughs> put it away for safekeeping. And then maybe, maybe I should start a tradition of maybe on New Year's Day, pull it out once a year and use it. Maybe I should do that. That would be kind of a neat tradition or on my birthday or something like that. But in order to get the same kind of feel that that razor has, I uh, went out and got this razor rock. Oh, I think they call it an old type. It's an homage to the old type. Uh, and it does have a similar shave to it. So if I ever want to get that kind of shave, I'll pull this kind of razor out. And uh, the other razor that I'm, I haven't used in a long time, and I'm glad you reminded me of it, is uh, this one right here from Viking's Blade. This is the original Crusader razor. This is a wonderful razor, and the difference between this and the Crusader razors, the Crusader adjustable razors that are out there now, is the fact that this one did not have any numbers on the adjustment collar, it just had those arrows there. So you really didn't know where you were as far as being mild or aggressive. I love that. It was like a shaving adventure, much like what I just showed you here in the Ascension Twist Adjustable. With this, uh, you can uh, snug up the handle and then back it off about an eighth of a turn, a quarter of a turn, a half a turn, and open up that blade gap and increase the aggression and efficiency. Where you are, who can say, but it's kind of a shaving adventure. I like that. And this has been a wonderful razor. So that's kind of in the spirit of this. And uh, your question uh, has reminded me that I have this one and I need to shave with it again. It's an absolutely wonderful razor. Now let me show you the, difference be the differences between this original Crusader razor and the Crusader razor that they market and sell right now. Here it is in frosted chrome, so you can see the difference between the two of them. They look about the same. I think the adjustment collar is slightly different. And the handle seems to be the same. The adjustment knob seems to be the same. The the length or the height seems to be the same. Is it the same? Yeah, it's about the same. This might be, original might be a little bit longer. The weight, about the same. So, uh, yeah, this is, a, this is a, a terrific razor. And I guess you could say it's a modern classic because they don't sell it anymore. And I'm glad I got one. And it just gave wonderful, wonderful shaves. And, of course, it's got the asymmetrical razor head, a scalloped. Uh, or sculpted comb on one side and a straight bar on the other side. And again, it's continuous adjust. And it's, um, let me open the doors like that. Let's do it like that. And of course, twist to open. And um, yeah, fantastic razor. So thanks for reminding me, Tim. I need to shave with that one uh, as well because it's a great, great razor. But that's kind of the long and short of it. The short answer is yes, I do shave with a lot of these razors that I purchased or acquired two, three years ago, even a little bit longer. And uh, as far as rotation, eh, you know, here and there, uh, depending on, on what kind of video I'm shooting and what kind of new razor is coming in, that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, thanks very much for the question. Uh, and it helped jog my memory of what I have and what I, uh, again, need to use. So thanks very much, Tim. Okay, so this next uh, comment comes from a viewer named Mark, spelled with a C, and he writes, Mark, I found a company in Italy that has very cheap prices, especially on Italian products. Even with international shipping being so expensive, it's tremendously cheaper than any place I've seen. For example, Parasso soap, less than $4.00. You might want to take a look. Well, thanks very much, Mark. And I will provide the link for you folks down below, you know, in the description below. And you can kind of judge for yourself, but that's great. I went up there and sure enough, 
really, really good affordable prices. Now, I don't know what the shipping is going to be or how that shakes out with where you're currently buying some of these uh, Parasso soaps and other products up there, but it's worth a look. So, Mark, thanks very much for providing the link. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so this next question comes from viewer T Man twenty two seventeen, and he writes, "Good morning, Mark. I hope you are well. I have a question that may be helpful for other people as well. But what would you recommend for shaving with hard water?" In the area I live, we have really hard water and water softeners don't really help us much. Hey, great, great question. And there are three things that I have come across over the years on wet shaving forums and in other discussions and other articles uh, online that offer a solution to this. Uh, the first one is distilled water. There's a great article by Mantic 59 or someone writing for Mantic 59, I can't remember which, but it's uh, on Sharpologist, and I'll link to that below. They say that distilled water uh, will probably help you make a, a really, really good lather. Um, so that's one option. Get a gallon of distilled water from your local grocery store and try that. You might want to warm it up and, and use it to make your lather that way. Um, the other uh, tip that I've heard is adding a few drops of glycerin. This will help create a lather if you're in a hard water area. I've never tried that before. I believe I have some glycerin here, but my water is not, not overly hard, not really overly soft. I always, well, you can see my videos. I always get a great lather. So, uh, and I don't have a water softener here. So I'm, I'm pretty lucky that way. Uh, but glycerin is something else that I've heard could help in making a lather with a shaving soap. Uh, the other thing, uh, the, the last thing, the third thing that I've heard is use a shaving cream because a shaving cream has a little more water content. Now, along with the distilled water, uh, if that works for you and you find that, hey, distilled water, wow, I, I can make a great lather with it, you might want to check uh, distilled water makers. Uh, I'll have a link where you can go to Amazon and actually buy a machine that will distill your water, your home water. And I don't know how they work, but a plumber talked to me about them. Uh, and I thought, well, hey, you know what? I'll just kind of file that away in case I ever need to share the information. So I'll link to the page where you'll see a number of different distilled water makers uh, on Amazon. So if you find that using distilled water actually works to help make your lather, but you don't want to run to the, to the grocery store to constantly buy a gallon or two of distilled water, perhaps this is a solution where you can make your own at home. So those are the three things I've heard. Uh, if viewers out there have any other remedies, please comment below and share them so that we can kind of exchange the information and see what works. But those are the three that I've heard. So I hope that helps in some way. And I thank you very much, T-Man 2217, for the question. I think it'll be very, very helpful to other viewers. Okay, so this next comment comes from viewer Bob LaRoe. And Bob is writing about his Q-Shave adjustable razor. Now, the Q-Shave is a clone of this razor here. This is the Mercure Futur, and the Q-Shave is a clone of it. It might be a little bit lighter in weight, but it looks identical to this. So I'm going to show you what he's talking about with my, with my Mercure Futur. And he writes, so I got a Q-Shave adjustable and had trouble getting the cap back on. I even cut my finger trying. I think I prefer the butterfly option. Well, the uh, Futur or the Q-Shave is a two-piece razor and, it, and the cap comes off. It has this little lip here where you can pry it off with your thumb just by this action here. Okay, there the cap is off now. And then what you do is you install your blade here uh, on the base where the handle is. And it has these two prongs in here that clip back in place. So all you do is just like that, clips back in place. Uh, so the key to all this is making sure your hands are dry. And uh, that's what I found 
in using this razor and using the Q-Shave because I have a Q-Shave as well. Just make sure your hands are dry. I always have a towel at the ready to dry off my hands for just such an occasion. Uh, in adjusting this razor, uh, you grasp it on the ends and the entire handle here turns. That's how you adjust it. So uh, you have to make sure your hands are dry because if your, your fingers are slick here and you try to adjust this, they might slip off and you'll catch the edge of that blade again. So again, make sure my hands are dry or uh, I will adjust it inside a towel like this uh, or I will hold it against my palm like this and I'll adjust it this way so it won't slip. And that seems to work also. But ultimately, I make sure that my hands are dry. Now, this leads me to something else that I ran across, uh, something that I've incorporated into my routine. After my shave, I clean all my gear. So if I have a three-piece razor with a blade in it, what I like to do is, after every shave, I'll take it apart. I'll take apart the handle, and I'll take off the, uh, the base plate. I'll remove the blade. Okay, I got the cap here. I'm going to set the cap over here. I'll remove the blade, and I'll rinse this off under the, under, the, under the water sometimes if there is some soap scum building on the blade. Uh, and then I will place it in a towel like this, and then I will, I will I'll pat it dry. And then I'll take it out, and I need to set it someplace. I don't like to set it on the counter because the counter is probably still wet after my shave. So what I've learned to do, because one time I accidentally left it in the towel and in going to uh, dry off the cap and the base plate and the other parts, it was kind of buried in the towel. I forgot to take it out. I cut my finger. So that's because I'm always trying to find a place to put this blade to set it down because it's dry. The counter is wet from my splashing, splashing around and you know, where do I put it? Well, I have found that before doing any of this, I clean my brush. Now, my brush is nice and dry. I use a synthetic brush. It's nice and dry. And I'll set my brush on the counter. And while it's sitting there, I'll take my blade and I'll just set it right on top of the knot like that. And it just is enough to sit there to where it's in a nice dry environment. Uh, you know, air is circulating through it, that sort of thing. I'll go ahead and I'll dry off my, uh, my, my cap and my handle and my base plate, or I'll, uh, I'll dry off uh, my three-piece, my, my twist-to-open razor, dry off the doors and that sort of thing in the towel. And after everything is nice and dry, then I'll take the blade, just like that, off of the, uh, off of the, off of the top of the knot, I have my cap right here. I'll drop it back in if I'm going to use it again. And then I'll put the base plate back on like that. And then reassemble with the handle like that. I know some guys, when they like to reassemble a three-piece razor, they like to hold the razor head like that. Up to you. I like to use my palm. Uh, and then everything is back together again, as you can see. right? And, you know, I haven't cut myself because that happened one time. The razor blade was left in here and I went to, to dry out the other pieces of the three-piece razor and ooh, caught myself. So that's just something I'm starting to do now. I just take that blade and I set it on top of a dry knot there. And then, uh, you know, after everything's assembled, then I'll wipe down my counter, I'll wipe down the base of this and then I'll hang this in a, in a razor stand. Uh, or if it's pretty dry, I'll just, Sit it, let it sit there right there like that, depending on uh, what the situation is. If I already have a, a brush that's in the stand, whatever. But that's kind of my routine. Uh, Bob, thanks for that comment. Uh, that jogged my memory to kind of share this other method with everyone. Uh, I hope you find that helpful. That's kind of what I'm doing. And I think, uh, you know, this way I know where my brush is. I know where that blade is when I'm cleaning things up. And that's kind of something that I've gotten in the habit of doing. And it seems to work for, for me if I'm going to be using that blade for another shave. So if, if, I, if I use it for one shave, I want to use it for a second or a third shave. I kind of know where that blade is when I'm cleaning everything up. And then that way, um, you know, it's not hiding in a towel. It's not sitting in a puddle on a wet counter. Uh, 
you know, that sort of thing. I know where it is. And, and it just seems to be in a dry area where I can get to it very, very easily. So thanks very much for that, Bob. Uh, I appreciate it. Okay, so this next question comes from viewer Ken Frederick. And he writes, Hi, Mark. Great review of the Shark Super Chrome Blades. I had mixed results when I first used them, but did much better the second time around. Fewer shark bites. Maybe it's all down to improving my shaving technique. Speaking of blades, I have a related question for you that might be good to address on the Monday morning mailbag. I often come across the term weeper on shaving forums and videos. I have also heard you use the term. Now, obviously, a nick is a minor version of a cut. So how does the term weeper fit into all of this? Thanks, Mark. Take care. It's a great question, Ken. And uh, coincidentally, I happen to have a weeper. Uh, I did a head shave a few days ago, and I ended up catching myself right there. I think you can see that. That, my friends, is a weeper. Now, a weeper, as I understand it, and I think the definition of weeper, it's a rather, uh, it's pretty much a colloquialism. I think I think the 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 definition has has a wide range. There's a wide swath of this definition depending on what part of the world you go to. But generally speaking, my understanding is that a weeper is actually a scraping of the skin that doesn't draw any blood like a nick or a cut, but the blood might weep up or ooze up that sort of thing, and it ends up inflaming the skin. Um, for me, my experience is this kind of thing right here uh, is the result of, again, of a skin scrape, but I don't really get any blood oozing up from it. I think what happens with me is the blood pools underneath the, the scrape, so to speak, and uh, it results in a small welt or a, a small little bump uh, of sorts. Um, and uh, that's always been my definition. Now, a nick is exactly that. A nick is just a, just, a, just a little nick where there's a little bit of blood and it closes up with some cold water or an alum block uh, or maybe even a little dab of a styptic pencil if you don't have an alum block. Um, and I think that um, razor burn is a little more serious than weeper. Razor burn is where you've shaved over an area far too many times and you end up with a great deal of redness. And of course, uh, a cut is a little larger than a nick. And you're going to need a styptic pencil to close that up a little more. And it might take time to heal up. Whereas a nick is here and gone. Uh, I also get what, a, what I call phantom nicks. These are nicks that, that I don't feel. I don't see after the shave. But uh, maybe a half an hour later or an hour later, I, get a, I see a little bit of a scab that sloughs off because there was, might be a really, really minute little nick that didn't close up. It bleeds a little bit, it coagulates, and it's gone. I call those phantom nicks. Razor bumps, I think, are a little different. Razor bumps um, will give you a bump, but I think this is characteristic of cartridge razors because a cartridge razor does exactly what uh, it says it does. That is, uh, if you have three or four, five blades in a cartridge head, what it does is, if this is your skin level here and here's your whisker, what it does is it actually pulls the whisker out and then shaves it at, at that base as the whisker is being stretched. So, so when it falls back in, it falls below the... Uh, the skin line, and then curls up and doesn't come out the same hole, and that's, what's res that's what results in a skin, in a razor bump. Whereas with a safety razor, that's why a lot of cartridge razor users switch to a safety razor, because you don't get that, that, that stretching, that, that really extreme stretching of the whisker where you're cutting at the base of the whisker and it's falling below the skin line. You're cutting it so it falls even with the skin line and can, can grow back out. That's my understanding of a razor bump. So if I had to kind of put them in any kind of order from seriousness, you know, from, from not so serious to, you know, a little more serious, I would, I would rate them this way. 
my opinion. I would say first is Nick, followed by a Weeper, followed by Razor Burn, followed by a Cup. Now, some of you might put a Weeper uh, a little farther down the line. You might say Nick, Razor Burn, Weeper, Cut. You know, okay, how, however. Um, but yeah, I, I was rather embarrassed that I got this from doing a head shave, and uh, it ended up being fortuitous because I can show you that that's a weeper. That's not, uh, it's not a cut, it's not a nick, and it's not razor burn. It's a weeper, and I, I accidentally, you know, operator error. I didn't even, perhaps uh, I didn't have enough lather there, and I ended up scraping the skin, and that's what I get. And it's going to take a little while to heal up, so my next head shave, I'm going to have to avoid that area. It happens once in a blue moon. So I would say, just thinking about it, my opinion, the way to avoid weepers is to use a light touch. Don't use a, an overly aggressive razor. Make sure you have plenty of lather and protection there so that your razor glides over the area, your skin is protected, and all you're doing is shaving the whisker away. That's the way I, uh, that's the way I see it. And, and I think that there will be some debate as to whether or not my order is correct. There will also probably be some discussion as to whether my definition is correct. Um, but that's been my experience. So this, when I get this, I know it's a weeper. Sometimes my weepers even look like a blemish. And I mistake a weeper for a blemish. And thinking, oh, well, I got a blemish there. When in fact, it's a weeper that has developed from a previous shave. Now, the interesting thing about a weeper is there's no pain involved with it. As far as my experience has been, I don't get any pain from it. I don't say to myself, ooh, I scraped my skin. There's, there's no kind of experience like that. It's not, I don't know that I'm doing it at the time. It's only after the shave do I notice it develop that, oh, gee whiz, I've, I've, I've got a little weeper there. And I think it's because after the scrape, uh, that, that blood starts to very, very slowly fill up underneath that, that skin, resulting in a, in, a, in, a, in a welt for me. Whereas some other shavers, if you get a weeper, perhaps your skin is a little different, it'll ooze up and you'll, you'll, you'll see the blood. It'll be a little more noticeable for you. But for me, it's not. Uh, this is how it happens. So, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of my understanding of it and my experience of it. So um, I think that if you do a lot of shaving um, and you hold good technique, and you use and you do the proper prep, and you use a, a blade and a razor that is appropriate for your skin and beard type. I think weepers are few and far between. Some might be a little more serious than others, uh, and I know that um, this one here, because it's on thinner skin, uh, it was more apt to happen. But on a fatter, on a fatter part of my face, my chin, my neck, it doesn't happen as much. And if it does, uh, if it, it, it comes and goes. The weeper's there, and then it goes. And by my next shave, uh, I don't seem to see it there, so I'm okay. Uh, but like I say, once in a blue moon, it could happen. But um, if you use good technique, uh, light touch, let the razor do all the work, gentlemen, get a good lather, that sort of thing, I don't, I don't think it's going to happen too much. But once in a blue moon, it does happen. And uh, for me, uh, if it happens up here, well, it's a little more prominent and sticks around a little bit longer. If it happens around my chin or my cheek or my neck area, for me, my experience has been it's kind of here and gone. And I really don't have to worry about it, even if it is slightly visible for the next shave. It just seems, I don't know, it just, it just seems to take care of itself, so to speak. All right, so that's kind of the way I see it, uh, Ken. And if there are any other opinions on this, or if you have anything else to offer regarding a weeper, or the definition of it, or uh, how to treat them after you get them, uh, that would be great. Please comment below and share your thoughts on that. Because as I say, I think in different parts of the country and around the world, the, the word has a slightly different, different definition. And some people might regard a weeper to be 
something a little different than what uh, than what my perspective is than what my perspective is or maybe you're in line with what I've just said so you know what comment below let us know and thanks very much for that uh, that question Ken very very helpful and just great to pass it on to you okay that's it thanks very much for tuning in again I really do appreciate it please share please subscribe please like hit that bell so to give you a yell the next time I upload a video comment below let me know Check out the executive shaving company. Use the code MARK5. Check out my blog, georgetoon.com slash blog for my comic strip George, other cartoons, other videos like this. I'm on Facebook. Check out my Facebook page. Check out Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements for some great, great shaving gear. Check out Global Shave Clubs International for some great shaving gear. Check out my Amazon product page at amazon.com slash shop slash Mark Charady, where you'll find all the products I review on this channel. Organize and categorize so you can find everything in a snap very easily. I'll leave you with this laugh. Thanks very much for tuning in again. I really do appreciate it. Make it a great week.